Sales and Specification Manager for Action Air, who are the uh, Fire and Smoke Division of Swigen. We specialise in the manufacture of fire and smoke dampers and associated control systems. Well, we became part of the Swigan family about five years ago when they acquired Action Air and the other divisions of the business as well. Um, the values it stands by are very strong, so trust, commitment and cust customer empathy. Um, and they are heavily um, investing in us as a business because they see fire and smoke um, as a business unit, as a critical part of their, their growth within the UK market. We've um, recently launched a range of EIS classified dampers. So we have our range of E classified, ES classified, and now we add in the Therm Shield, which is the EIS classified damper, just to give us a broader range of dampers that we can offer to the market. So the UK market has uh, historically seen dampers manufactured from metal blades, uh, metal cases, metal blades. Um, we are seeing more dampers uh, entering the market now with a, a calcium silicate blade which offers an insulation value as well. So whereas previously the dampers either offered the integrity only criteria of the test or the integrity and reduced smoke leakage criteria, we're now expanding the portfolio to include the insulation criteria as well. So it, it covers the, uh, the full range of classifications available from the fire test. The Swagen team um, consists of quite a few different departments, so the Action Air division of the business again. Um, we have um, quite a vast external sales team who are customer facing. Um, we have internal technical support, customer services, um, estimating order processing, um, and a full engineering team as well that conduct in-house um, development tests and all of the, uh, the work that's associated with certification. We've been doing quite a lot of testing recently to simplify the installation methods. We identified that there was a significant concern in the industry with um, compliant installations. So what we tried to do is strip back the, the how onerous an install can be and keep it very simple. So effectively you can just install our damper, screw it into the wall and that would be the classification maintained. You can then go on to enhance that uh, installation and add the stone wool and the patricing or the ablative by infill behind it. But all of that doesn't detract or add to the classification, it just adds to the installation method. most valuable assets that we have nowadays is our development furnace. So it sits over the, uh, over the way just outside um, in its own unit and it's a one and a half meter cubed development furnace which allows us to do vertical and horizontal testing. Um, what that allows us to do as a business is streamline installations um, so that when we go to test to a third party notified body we know that that will pass. Now historically that would always tend to be an over-engineered solution to ensure that the test passes but what we've actually managed to do is make those installs leaner while still meeting the functional requirements of the standards. The, the, the documents sometimes muddy the water with the, the, the terminology surrounding smoke and fire dampers for example um, when we talk about compartmentation dampers um, we should be talking about fire dampers and fire dampers with varying levels of classification so an integrity only product an integrity and reduced smoke leakage product or an integrity insulation and reduced smoke leakage product whether it be motorized or manual activation it's a fire damper the other product that we should really be talking about is smoke control dampers and they are to manage the flow of smoke out of a building or maintain compartmentation in certain scenarios. The, the terminology such as fire and smoke dampers is something we really need to get away from as an industry because it muddies the water between the two products and they are two very defined products. We've engaged with the ASFP to um, ensure all of our external sales managers and engineers are, have at least done the introduction to fire, uh, passive fire protection by the ASFP. Um, and quite a few other members of staff as well are undertaking the level two and three um, to then go on for the IFE qualification in passive fire protection. And all of the training that we're doing is either in person or online with the ASFP directly. 
into market is to have um, experienced technical people out in the field that are customer facing. So you can pick up the phone and one of our engineers will be in your office within a few days and they can work through the, the common pitfalls that we're all kind of tripping up over. Um, if I would give one key message, it's early engagement and we are in a position to provide that in early engagement. If the builder's work isn't done correctly to start with, everything falls down after that. So we need to make sure that we're in at the very early stage of the project. Um, people are reviewing builder's work opening sizes, clearances, uh, and only then can anybody else further down the supply chain be successful in a compliant installation.